Hello friends, it's Morgana here. Welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a beautiful, simple snow scene using only two colours, uh, cerulean blue and Payne's grey. Uh, I'm beginning by using my uh, extra large Ron Ranson Pro Art Harte brush to wet approximately half of my paper. I'm working on A4 size today. Uh, and now I'm going in with my uh, synthetic mop brush and some cerulean blue to kick off with. Um, I'm going to put the full details of my paper and brushes uh, in the description below this video if you're interested. You can see we're already getting some lovely uh, colour diffusion here in the sky because I've wet the paper to begin with. I'm using my brush to sort of uh, spread that blue around uh, so that I can introduce some Payne's Grey uh, for some lovely uh, diffused clouds. I wanted uh, a bright but cloudy sky, as uh, snowy skies so often are. You can see here that this lovely mop brush uh, is making short work of uh, blending these lovely colours together to give me some uh, beautiful clouds and a uh, lovely diffusion. I'm making sure to uh, keep my brush approximately the same wetness, if not slightly drier, than the paint that's currently on the paper because I don't want the paint to run everywhere, I don't want sort of blooms or cauliflowers coming up where I'm putting my brush in and just uh, working those two colours in together and uh, trying to get a lovely diffusion. I'm leaving uh, a little white space here on the left you may notice. This is, uh, I want this to be white cloud, uh, the idea of the sun sort of peeping behind that or rather hiding behind that which is what's giving it uh, its brightness and making it stand out from the rest of the sky which um, I'm keeping this lovely uh, blue and grey cloudy combo of colours. And now that I'm happy with the sky, I'm going in and adding uh, some water beginning again with very pale cerulean blue and just sweeping it across the lower part of the paper in a slight uh, left-handed direction just to give the illusion of sort of an iced up stream or river uh, that's coming along here on this left side. You can see I'm doing some dry brush here to give the illusion of sort of sparkle on the water, holding my brush flat to the page to get a good angle uh, it's not soaking wet, you can see I'm getting a lovely uh, bit of dry brush and sparkle from this uh, synthetic mop brush here, which uh, I'm really enjoying. You want your brush to be only lightly damp for that sort of thing. Um, it takes a little bit of practice though, <laughs> you should see my practices, they're terrible. <laughs> uh, but practice makes perfect as they say. Coming in now with uh, some Payne's Grey to darken this down a little bit just to mimic our lovely uh, clouded sky there. You can see again using dry brush technique to just sweep the colour along mimicking the strokes that I made with the blue and adding in a few more. I'm going to put some darker Payne's Grey in later on uh, so I'm more worried about the uh, sort of colour dispersal here uh, than focusing on sort of the, the light and dark uh, tonal values too much just want to get a little bit of these lovely mid darts in here.
can see I'm using these sort of sweeping little marks to sort of mark out the perspective as well. And I've got sort of a large sweep along the back there that's going to be the tree line and then a sort of meandering mark of the, uh, the path of the river imitating the slight foreshortening you get in a landscape photo as it sort of drifts towards us through the snow. As you can see, I'm adding in the tree line now, using exactly the same brush uh, and just using some Payne's Grey to go in and put in a few very sort of basic, uh, very few just sort of raggedy trees uh, along the back of the painting here. It's a quick and easy whittle for a fir tree. <laughs> just whittle that brush up the paper. A little bit more careful for a, a deciduous tree. Uh, don't worry, we will be going back over these. They're not going to look as terrible as they do now. I just want to get the basic shapes in because uh, this is designed to be a lovely, uh, simple and easy piece to follow and to uh, make your own in your own way. You can see that my uh, tree line is not perfectly straight. Uh, it's a bit wonky and a bit raggedy. This is good because that's, you know, the real world is a bit wonky and a bit raggedy around the edges. Uh, so I am keeping that as unstraight. Um, I'm going to raggedy it up a little bit more, I believe. Uh, but for now, I'm just adding uh, some darker values to the right hand side of these trees that I've put in. Uh, just to give the illusion of the light coming in from the top left. And now I'm going over these trees doing a little bit of stippling. Uh, you can use any uh, brush you like for this. For me, I'm using an old mop brush, uh, which I managed to destroy <laughs> a little while ago, so it doesn't come to a fine point anymore. But what it is, is perfect for getting those little, lovely little fluffy, diffused, little stipply bits that uh, just give a little bit of softness to that tree line and just give the uh, illusion of uh, much smaller branches and detail that we don't want to actually add in stroke by stroke because uh, that would take far too long for what's designed to be a lovely, quick, clean and simple uh, snow scene. You can see I've pressed my brush so it's a little bit flat and I'm just going in now and uh, adding in a few more details this is just the uh, sort of poking and prodding stage, as I like to call it. Thinking, hmm, that could be a little darker. That could be a little lighter. That needs a little bit more blending. Just adding some extra uh, sort of darker values to those trees, making them really pop out against that lovely sky, uh, which has by now dried. Uh, and this is uh, my fine detail brush. This is a small round synthetic brush. Uh, the size on it says triple zero. Uh, but I believe you could use any sort of small or fine brush that you have for this. This is not, uh, this doesn't need to be a specific brush for a specific thing. You can see, uh, as promised, I am raggeding up that tree line just a little. <laughs>
So now I am happy with the tree line, or at least mostly happy. Um, I'm just going in again with my fine brush. I'm going to add a little bit of detail in the foreground of this painting along the banks of this lovely river. I'm going to put in uh, some reeds and grasses poking up out of the ice and snow. Uh, you could use any fine brush for this or a rigger brush if you happen to have one. Uh, this is what I'm using because uh, this is what I had to hand. But uh, as always with all of my uh, tutorials, uh, use whatever works best for you. You can see for these lovely reeds, I'm just using uh, quick strokes with the point of the brush and I'm going from the bottom upwards so that as you get that upward swipe, uh, the line tapers off naturally and forms uh, the point that you so normally get on rushes and reeds in real life. There we go, you can see I've added in some lovely detail to this foreground. Uh, and now I'm just painting in uh, the finishing touch, uh, a nice tree. The foreground detail you saw me doing, um, I've used exactly the same technique for all those rushes so you can easily replicate it, just lovely uh, sweeps of the brush. Uh, and I'm doing exactly the same thing here for this tree. Uh, again, using my fine detail brush, uh, and some nice dark Payne's grey to put in some lovely wintry branches here. You can do this tree whatever shape you want. I uh, opted for a sort of a, a, a vaguely oval shape I think in the end, um, but Feel free to do whatever tree you want, whichever tree you think would look best, or, or even no tree at all. You know, you're more than welcome to leave out the tree if you're not a fan, but uh, I am a fan of trees. <laughs> uh, and I can never resist a lovely uh, wintry tree with uh, bare branches against the skyline. I think they always look beautiful, um, so I decided to pop one in here. You can see I'm just doing gentle little lines leading off from one another uh, as branches for this lovely snowy tree here. Not being too precious about the lines, just letting them sort of go where they want, uh, trying to give it this uh, really sort of natural, uh, sort of natural growth look. Nothing too uh, symmetrical or stylized.
you can see I'm working from right to left uh, to do this tree here, filling in the branches bit by bit. Uh, on reflection, it probably would have been more sensible to work from left to right, <laughs> uh, as then I wouldn't have had to hold my hand up to avoid working over the branches that are already wet. But uh, we live and learn, and uh, now you won't make my mistake. <laughs> and see here, I'm just putting in a slight shadow of the tree, glinting off the, uh, the freshly fallen snow, giving it a little extra definition to the base of our tree here. I'm just using some kitchen towel to dab out the excess paint so that it leaves just a little shadow rather than a uh, rather than a very dark one. And just to finish off the tree, I'm using the same uh, stippling effect that I used on the uh, distant background tree line, but uh, a bit more lightly this time. Just going in and carefully uh, brushing a slight amount of wispiness over the edges of the branches around the outside. You can see I'm adding in a little bit more extra detail as I think it's needed. And then going back in with a stipple brush, this is just some uh, loose Payne's grey that I'm popping over. You can see I'm not just going over the whole thing, I'm trying to be a little bit directional and keep it sort of on the uh, outside, sort of top little wispy branch bits. And you can tell that I can never resist messing with the background. Here I am stippling in a little bit more along that uh, horizon line. Decided that it needed the impression of some uh, shorter uh, sort of shrubs or bushes just before the tree line. So I'm stippling them in a little bit darker, nice and wispy. A uh, little bit of extra detail in there. And just for the final touch here, uh, a couple of bird silhouettes, because uh, those of you who know me will know I can never resist a bird or two. Just using my very fine brush, and again, Payne's Grey, to very carefully paint in a couple of bird shapes. You don't need to do this, um, but I love birds, so there we go. I hope I didn't overdo it this time. And there we are. There's the finished painting. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. Uh, I really enjoyed painting it. I think it's a lovely, simple and beautiful sort of nice clean painting that you can do. Um, I particularly love the uh, how easily the tree line sort of springs into focus once you put in that uh, stippling detail. Um, I enjoyed doing the tree. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me do it. I hope this inspires you to perhaps have a go at a lovely snow scene of your own. Uh, so thank you for watching. Um, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. It helps me immensely. Uh, and I hope that I will see you all in the next video. Uh, thanks again for watching and goodbye for now.